So this first card is going to be a heart that is made out of different types of greenery and stems. So for this one, you just prepare a few different shades of green. Uh, you can skip forward to the end to see the ones I chose if you'd like to choose all the same ones. And then we shape those into a heart as we paint. And at the end, we'll add some text in the middle.
Okay, I think that looks good. So now I'm going to go in and do the writing. I've already traced what I want to write just to make sure my letters are the right size and the right shape. Um, I would recommend doing that beforehand as well. And definitely make sure everything is completely dry before you go in and do this because you don't want to accidentally smudge any of the greenery that you've already painted. This next card is going to be a bunch of florals that we're going to cut out in the shape of a heart at the end. I'm using some pinks and yellows, a little bit of blue. You can make them whatever color you want though. Um, sorry for the glare. I couldn't tell when I was originally painting that my light was reflecting off of the water, but hopefully you can still see. So in the middle we're just going to start with two petal shapes. And it's a similar technique to most of the flowers where you paint the middle and then just do some c-shaped strokes around to kind of encase the middle so we have the two petals here and just a big c on one side backward c and then a c on the other side some smaller thinner ones at the top like more lines just to show the top down view of the petals another petal down here that's sticking out I'm just adding a little bit more color. I like to add orange tones in the middle. The one beside this is going to be a rose. So we're going to start with some circles in the middle. Just kind of messy overlapping circles to show the middle where the petals are packed tightly together. And then those looser C shapes around to show the bigger petals on the outside of the rose. Again, I like to add a little bit more color to the edge and a tiny bit of an orange tone in the middle. We're going to make another rose lower down, just a little bit darker this time. So start with whatever paint color you chose. I have this dark kind of pink purple and make those loose messier circles and then see shapes around. There you go. Just adding a little bit more water to get my colors to flow together more and darkening the edge a little bit okay I think that's good and over here I'm just gonna start creating some yellow flowers so we're going for a typical four petal flower but just with a little bit of an abstract shape to it so kind of just go with what feels natural and let it touch the rose beside a little bit if you want some of those colors to flow together as long as you don't have a ton of water so they don't blob together it can be a really nice effect to get some of that pink coming into the yellow and one more four petal flower up here then i'm just going to add a little bit of orange to the center how we did with the other ones and the next thing we're going to do is the same sort of flower in a blue wash over on the bottom right side so really light to start, just to define the shape and pick up a little bit of the pink from that rose. And then we're going to add some more concentrated blue to the center, and it's going to flow out nicely into the rest of the flower and mix together as it dries. So 
So once you're done your blue flower, I would suggest pausing here to mix up a few different varieties of green, some with more yellowish tones, some more blue. Um, we're going to start adding the greenery around and it's just nice to vary the types of greens instead of just having one color throughout. So once you finish mixing up your colors, take your first green that you're going to start with and just begin to draw some leaves around. I'm just going to start touching some of these leaves a tiny bit to the rose. You can see I did that to the one at the very top and it's got a little bit of pink in the leaf. I think that looks really nice. Don't overdo it. You don't want your rose to suck up a bunch of green. Um, I also think we're missing a little bit of blue down here. Maybe a blue flower, a little blue blob of some sort. It can kind of be whatever shape. It's abstract. It'll look good when it's done. Just have faith in the process. It'll all dry pretty nicely, I think. I'm just going to touch up the little leaf up here. I feel like it dried a little bit funny. And when I'm done that, so you're finished your greenery at this point, make sure everything is completely, completely dry. And go in with a bit of an orange color to the center of all your flowers, just to define where the middle is. And again, make sure everything's really dry, or otherwise it'll just run together and you'll be essentially just adding to the paint of the whole flower what you want is to add another layer on top when it's completely dry and just do that for all of your blooms and that'll be the last finishing touch
So the next step is that we're going to cut up the beautiful painting you just made um, into a heart. So be really careful with this. Go and trace it first to make sure that you're cutting properly so that you don't mess up after all your hard work. And once you have your shape traced out, go in and cut it out into a heart. And after that, we're going to glue it onto a card and then add our writing underneath. So I'll just finish showing how I did that. This next card is going to be the one that has a heart in the middle with some greenery and florals around. So we're just going to paint a couple of abstract four petal flowers um, at the top and on the left side. And at the bottom there's going to be a tiny little rose and then just some greenery in varying shades of green. We're going to start off with a pink flower on top. It's half hidden behind the heart. So we're pretending it's a four petal flower, but you're just going to do three of them sticking out from the top. So just a light wash and then add some pink to darken up the edges. Excuse my camera shaking. I'm not sure what was happening here. Um, so we're going to do one other little pink four petal flower here and a little friend beside it. So the same thing. Those are just going to be on two little stems once they are completely dry. We're going to go to the bottom right and add a couple of sideways kind of flowers. So just a curve on the bottom and the little petals sticking out on the side. There. Add a little bit of orange to the center of these ones and mop up some of the water so they're not completely swimming. And I'm going to do our little rose over here. So just a couple circles and then one big C shape on what would be the bottom of the flower. It's pointing upside down so we're doing it on the top. And add a tiny bit of orange in the middle and a little bit more color to the edge. Then we're going to start with our greenery. Excuse my camera shaking. I'm going to start with a dark green and do some ferns. So just one straight line and some little squiggly lines sticking out on either side of the middle line. Little squiggly lines. I'm sure that's the technical term for how to paint a fern. <laughs> Probably not. But hey, it works, and that's just what you're doing. I think it takes away some of the stress when we realize that it's all just kind of abstract shapes. There, just some little squiggles, and the same up here. One straight line. And we're going to add the little squiggly bits on the side. So start smaller at the tip of where the leaf would be, and then widen them as you go towards the bottom just to make it look a little bit bushier. And put them kind of closer together and bigger at the bottom. And add a little bit more green to the center. Just a 
give that illusion of it being thicker there and darker. So I'm going to switch up my green here and just start doing some leaves. And stems all the way around. So pick whatever greens feel right to you, whatever matches the colors you have going on in your picture. I like to darken the edges and the tips of my leaves after I do a basic wash. I feel it gives more definition than just painting one overall color. So I go in really light with a lot of water, not so much paint, and then take a more concentrated version of that color and add it to the tips. And then it flows together pretty nicely as it dries.
So while you're waiting for all of this to dry, prepare your heart color that you're going to have in the center. It can be more pink or more reddish, whatever you prefer. And when everything is completely dry, go in and paint your big heart in the middle. And we're just going to paint that, let it dry all the way, and then add our finishing touch over top, which is the text that says Happy Valentine's Day in the middle of the heart. So while the heart is drying, take a darker orange color and do a couple of little spots in the middle of each flower just to define where the center would be. This last card is pretty quick, a lot less steps than the other ones. We're just going to layer two hearts on top of each other. So we're going to start with a bigger heart for the under layer, and it's going to be a little bit darker than the next one. So start with a darker pinkish red color and fill that all in. You definitely want to be sure that this heart is completely dry before you start the next step. The point is to layer the two items over top of each other without them running together. We want to see the shape of this heart underneath still. So once it's completely dry, you can take a very light pink wash and start painting your smaller heart on top of this one.
And while that smaller heart is drying, I'm just going to even out the bigger one underneath. I'm not 100% happy with how it dried. I'm just going to run some water over that and smooth out the lines on it. Make sure you don't touch the little heart. It's not dry yet and you want the lines of the two to stay separate so the two shapes are really defined. I'm just going to go over and smooth this. It's the difference between using really good supplies and not great supplies. I don't have the best watercolor paper that I'm using this time around, so it definitely didn't dry as smoothly as I would have liked, but it's fixable. You don't want to overwork it, but it's okay to go in and tweak it a little bit after. So that looks a lot smoother now. I'm going to add a little bit more color while it's wet because I feel like it could use some extra definition in comparison to that lighter one. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to let the both of them dry completely. And once it is all dry, at least for mine, probably because I went back and touched the bigger heart while they were drying, I feel like I need to do one more little wash to sweep away some color from that little heart because the edge was not standing out as much as I wanted it to over top of the big heart. I think that looks quite a bit better there. So once both of those are completely dry, you can lightly sketch where you want that string to go and then draw that over top. I'm choosing a thin black string with a little ribbon. You could choose a thicker one with color to it or whatever you think would look best. Okay, and then when I finish this, I cut mine out and just glued them onto a separate card because I like that kind of 3D effect with the picture on top, but you could just leave them on the original paper as well. And make sure you trace out your message just to get your letters the right size and everything. And then once you write that out, that's the last step.